Michelangelo's celebrated study of Adam for the creation of man on the Sistine ceiling from the collections of Jonathan Richardson and uh, Joshua Reynolds that Otley reproduced in the School of Design is one of a handful that has an earlier English provenance. Although Otley's collection of Michelangelo was not without share, its share of drawings that are now thought to be old copies, it did include some outstanding masterpieces by his hand, thanks to the dispersal, and rather has to be said, rather mysterious dispersal, from the Casa Bonarotti in Florence, the main repository of Michelangelo's drawings retained by the family. Drawings from this source, acquired by Otley, include a spirited pen study of a cavalry skirmish uh, on the left, and a life study for the marble figure of day in the Medici Chapel, both now uh, in the Ashmolean. Otley also made purchases of Michelangelo drawings from the Roman sculptor and restorer uh, Bartolomeo Cavaceppi, who had bought them from the Florentine Cicciaporci family, and such as uh, this swirling early study for the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel uh, in the British Museum. And so in the middle of that sheet are these studies uh, for this on the right side uh, of the, the Last Judgment where the angels are acting like kind of angelic bouncers and keeping out. So we have a detail of it here. And these really minute figures, Michelangelo already has really the, the germ of the idea for, that, for, for, for those figures as they batter down with enormous violence and ferocity uh, the, the sinners who are trying to infiltrate uh, heaven. By rights, Ockley's school of design, as well as his study of early printmaking and inquiry into the origin and early engraving upon copper and wood, published in 1816, should be celebrated as pioneering art historical texts. In them, Ockley broke new ground in marshalling evidence drawn from historical sources as well as from recent scholarship in French and Italian along with a forensically detailed study of the prints and drawings in order to understand their function, manufacture, and authorship. Otley's skill in this field, fueled, one cannot help sensing, by a rather disputatious nature, evidenced by his querulous relationship with the British Museum trustees, is brilliantly brought to bear in his attempt to prove, in the inquiry into the origin and early engraving upon copper and wood, that the earliest printed edition of the late medieval work of popular theology, The Mirror of Human Salvation, was not, as early authorities had presumed, the so-called first Latin edition, believed to have been printed in Germany, but was rather the so-called second Dutch edition printed in Harlem. This question touched on the scholarly controversy then raging between the competing claims as to whether it was Costa in Harlem or Gutenberg in Germany that had invented printing. As it happens, Otley backed the wrong horse in this particular debate, but that is of little consequence. What is startling is the originality of Otley's investigative method. So here, here is uh, two pages um, from the origin and early history of the engraving, where he reproduces details side by side from the two editions to demonstrate that the wood blocks used for the Dutch edition predate those in the Latin edition as the latter were worn. So he, what he's trying to point out is here's the quality of the line here shows that this is an early impression, while here that line is gone, and so it must be the same block used later. And equally here, uh, he's showing there's more wear on the plate there. And at the same, uh, a few pages later, he's also examining and reproducing watermarks of various editions he had examined again in an effort to determine their sequence. And in fact, the working out of the sequence of these editions is still bedevils print scholars. So uh, Otley uh, may have got the fact that Costa was not the first printer, but uh, certainly in terms of working out where the editions date from, Otley is, is still referred to. One of uh, Otley's successor as keeper, the print scholar Anthony Griffiths, described the origin and early history of the engraving as, I quote, far in advance of anything published up to that time in any language, and even if over the heads of almost every English critic of the time, must have had considerable impact. The most immediate impact of Otley's return to England was a commercial one, as his enthusiasm for works documenting the birth of Italian printmaking in the second half of the 15th century, evidenced by the prints and yelly he had collected in Italy, caused a vogue for early prints among a small circle of collectors, 
such as the Yorkshire grandee Sir Mark Masterman Sykes and Otley's close friend, the wine merchant Thomas Lloyd. To take just one example, this engraving from a yellow plate was allegedly picked up for a small sum by Otley in Rome. He sold it on his return as the work of Mazzo Funaguera, the kind of the founding father uh, of Italian printmaking in Otley's view. And he sold it to Sir Mark Sykes for 70 guineas. And in the latter's sale, in the Sykes sale in 1824, it made a staggering 300 guineas, which was then the highest price any single print had ever made at auction. And for a sense of the enormity of that price, uh, it is worth recalling that Michelangelo's six-foot-high cartoon, known as the Epiphania, which is displayed permanently outside the entrance of the prints and drawings, fetched just over 11 pounds in 1860. Otley was an active participant uh, in this market, acting variously as a compiler of auction catalogues, agents for fellow collectors, and a collector in his own right, while also continuing to produce scholarly ventures, as in his planned dictionary of engravers that folded after the first volume covering A to Baldung, published in 1831. Otley retained his print collection until it was dispersed at his posthumous sale of 1837, when Otley's successor as keeper of prints and drawings, Henry Yosey, concentrated on inquiring from it early northern prints and Yelly. And so here on the left is this extraordinary trial proof by Dürer of the Adam and Eve, which, which fetched uh, 36 pounds. And on the right is an example of one of the number of Nelly prints that were acquired at that sale by Josie. But as has been mentioned already, Otley sold his drawings for the enormous sum of 10,000 to the fashionable portrait painter Sir Thomas Lawrence. When this deal occurred is unknown, apart from the fact that it postdated the mammoth 1,784 lot auction sale held over 16 days in June 1814 of Otley's drawings collection, the last and largest of four auctions offering parts, sometimes the same parts differently described, of his collection for sale. Although some drawings sold at these four, draw, uh, four auctions in 1803, 1804, 1807 and 1814, the core of the collection, including the best examples by Michelangelo and Raphael, remained in Otley's hands. This suggests he set high auction reserves, the lowest bid at which a work can be sold, although his stubbornness reaped dividends when the free-spending Lawrence became an active buyer of old master drawings around 1820. These four auction catalogues, particularly the 1814 one, in conjunction with the School of Design, provides the best source for gaining some idea of Otley's elusive holdings of drawings. And now, with the advent of the British Museum's online database, it is much easier to try to match the catalogue descriptions with drawings that bear Lawrence's collector's mark. As a result, from the around 1,300 drawings from Lawrence's collection of the British Museum, roughly a quarter of them, 294 to be precise, can be traced back with varying degrees of certainty to Otley, while another 50 Otley drawings came to the BM through other sources, such as Richard Payne Knight. So here's just an example of how I've managed to add the number of Otley drawings. So here, on the, the left-hand drawing, has a little uh, inscription to Velasquez. And so Otley then brought together all of these drawings, which are now Philip, you know, Philip Pantzer identified as being the work of a Florentine painter called Jacobo Confortini. But in a sense, although Pantzer's achievement in identifying the hand was great, Otley had already done part of the work because he'd, he'd actually recognised that these drawings all were by the same hand. Here you have the different descriptions of them, uh, one in 1804, uh, which starts off with the Magdalene, the one in the centre, and then uh, the 1807, changing the lotting of them, so it's a man sitting in a reflective mood, the one on the left, again with this uh, description of the man sitting in a flowered garment. So it's, that's the kind of, kind of detective work. That obviously, you can do so much more easily uh, with a database, because you can put in Velasquez and see what comes up if you've recorded the old inscriptions. And this is an example of a drawing that had been acquired, came through, not through the, uh, the, the Lawrence source, but came earlier on uh, through Richard uh, Payne Knight, having acquired it in the 1804 sale as Antonio Polowolo, and Otley uh, clearly recognised it was based on the uh, Monte Cavallo these uh, enormous classical sculptures uh, in Rome. 
and he called it uh, Polo Wolo. We now think it's probably by Gottsley, but sort of in the same ballpark. What percentage of Otley's collection is represented by the 350 BM drawings will perhaps forever remain mysterious, but from this sample one can gain a real sense of the quality of his collection. So here's an example of, uh, you know, uh, he was not infallible, so he accepted this uh, rather feeble copy of a Michelangelo and the, and the um, Casa Buonarroti as being an original work by um, Michelangelo. But such lapses are, I have to say, very, very rare, and one is struck time and time again by his eye for a good drawing, whether it be Italian or among the relatively few non-Italian works. So here's a drawing that... Uh, all of these are in the BM. Um, this is a, a drawing that he thought was by, by Giotto and is in the, in the School of Design as by Giotto. It's not by Giotto. It's so an early Italian drawing of, of the late you know, 1380 to 1400. Uh, here's uh, a wonderful coloured uh, Mantegna drawing uh, from Otley's collection, an allegory. Here is a drawing uh, by Fra Bartolomeo that Otley correctly identified as being a study uh, for the Last Judgment, that interestingly, after uh, Otley's death, uh, when it comes into the BM's collection, that gets called um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And he also has later drawings, this marvellous Passerotti, this early work by Anibale Caracci, which, in fact, Otley thought was by Correggio. And he also, um, I mean, as I think is a very good sign of the quality of a, a collector is, is how he collects outside his field. Although his non-Italian uh, drawings were much fewer in number, they uh, included some wonderful masterpieces like this uh, rare study by Shunga, dated 1469. Very recently, I uh, realized that he owned this drawing by uh, Rembrandt, which is overworked in um, oil paint. And he also... Somewhat surprisingly, because there aren't many French drawings in his collection, he also earned these two uh, very beautiful uh, Washo drawings. So, uh, to sum up um, what I think uh, Otley brought to British collecting, when he returned from Italy in, in 1799, he made a profound and lasting change to the taste of British collectors in a wide range of fields. His most notable achievement was the championing of the historical importance and aesthetic qualities of 14th and 15th century Italian art, whether it be in the form of an altarpiece, a manuscript cutting, or an engraving on yellow. In the field of drawings, the acquisition of his collections was core to making Sir Thomas Lawrence's collection such a great one. Although the chance to keep that great collection intact on Lawrence's death in 1830, 1830 was missed, large portions of it eventually ended up enriching museums in the United Kingdom, most notably the Ashmolean and the British Museum. Otley's scholarly achievements, like his activities as a collector, are only now beginning to be recognized and valued. I hope that I persuaded you to ponder, if you ever see Lawrence's stamp on a drawing, that it might have come from Otley, and to become excited when you see those telltale ruled red lines around a drawing. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. That was a wonderful, uh, deep analysis of, of Otley. I'm deeply intrigued by the Vato drawings. Was that a connection to a throwback to his training at the Royal Academy Schools? He's studying the life model. I know it's female rather than male. But what is it that captures his attention there? It's, it's really interesting. I, well, I, you know, like many things about Otley, one just, one just doesn't know. I mean, um, ob obviously there were... I mean, the, one of the only French 18th century drawing artists that is well represented in the BM is Watteau. So there was, there, there was a, a taste for Watteau. But this is slightly earlier, I have to say, for, uh, for appreciation of Watteau. So I don't know where he came across these things, why he liked them. I mean, I think he, you know, he clearly appreciated wonderful drawings and Watteau is a wonderful draftsman. I mean, that's probably as best as I can, uh, best idea I, ca I can give you but I wish I knew more. Okay, good, lovely. <laughs>